What's going on guys? Today I have three very easy tips that are gonna help you expose your image perfect every time. Now we have all been on set before where we think we are filming a perfectly exposed image. It looks amazing on camera. You can see it through the viewfinder. You can see it on the screen and it looks good. But you bring it back to the computer and the highlights are blown or the shadows are just gone. I'm going to show you all three very easy ways to make sure you know your exposure every single time. Tip number one is using the functions that are in camera. Now this is going to sound very self-explanatory to a lot of people, but I know a lot of people who actually don't use the simple easy functions that they have in camera that are going to help them expose the image correctly. The four simple and easy functions that I'm talking about in camera that you can use to expose your image perfectly is your exposure meter, your histograms, your waveform, and also zebras. Now these functions are gonna vary depending on what particular camera that you do have, but I know for a fact that every single camera that has a video function has an exposure meter, and I'm almost certain that the camera also has histograms available as well. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth on what these things do, I'll save that for another video, but I'll give you a brief description on each one of them. The exposure meter is one of the simplest things that you can use to expose your image. Now when you're looking through your viewfinder and typically on a monitor as well, you'll see that little meter at the bottom of the screen, it has a zero in the middle, and then it's little notches that go up to maybe plus two and then it's not just that go down to negative two. That right there is called an exposure meter. Now a good rule of practice when using an exposure meter is to just make sure you're floating around that zero area. If you find yourself above a few micro notches over the zero and between the one or below the zero and between the negative one, it doesn't really matter. You just want to stay within that general vicinity on the exposure meter when using it. Histograms is the next function. Now when you're looking at them, they might seem a bit difficult to actually read, but they're fairly simple as well. When you're looking at a histogram, the right side of the chart indicates your highlights and the left side of the chart indicates your shadows. Now the easiest way to use a histogram to expose your image is to basically just make sure your tones aren't all the way on the highlights and that your tones aren't all the way on the shadows. This is going to make sure your image isn't over or underexposed. Next function is waveforms. Now a lot of budget camera options don't have waveforms in body. The way a waveform graph is displayed is everything at the bottom is going to signify your shadows, everything at the top is going to signify your highlights, and everything in the middle is going to signify your midtones. Now when you're looking at a waveform graph it's going to show you real time where every single tone is in your image. For instance, if you were looking at a waveform of this image right here of me, you would probably see a lot of mid-tones right here in this area. Over in this area, you would probably see a few shadows. And over on this area, you might see some highlights because the way this light is hitting this uh, wall right here. Now, a simple way to use a waveform if you're looking at it is to just make sure your tones throughout the image aren't hitting the top or the bottom. The next function is zebras. Zebras is a very simple function that I use all the time. And it's very helpful for making sure that your image is not overexposed. Now, what zebras does is it basically signifies on your image while you're using it all the areas of the image that are overexposed and it signifies them with almost like a stripe zebra pattern and when you're looking at this in your film and you see this pattern you can basically correct your image exposure depending on if you want those tones back or if you don't and it's just going to help you overall to make sure that your image is not overexposed in the areas where you need it to be correct tip number two that's going to help you nail the perfect exposure every single time is just to expose for your subject now this is going to sound very self-explanatory but what i mean is there are going to be certain situations where you're exposing for a certain portion of the image and the exposure of other portions of the image won't matter. If you're outside and you see a beautiful sunset, you're gonna wanna expose the image for the sunset if that's the focal point of the shot. Now by exposing for the sunset, that's gonna mean that a lot of other portions of the image may be silhouetted and they may be dark and they may be underexposed. And that's fine. It's up to you to perfectly expose the image for what is the focal point of the image. And this is gonna go vice versa when you have a subject that's out in very bright daylight and you have to expose for them and you might get kinda sorta an overexposed sky sometimes. It's up to you to judge what is is the focal point of the shot and to expose the shot for that particular focal point. A good practice is to find that good middle ground where you have the subject, the person, and they're exposed pretty good and you have the sky which is exposed pretty good rather than having that contrast between the two. That way when you get in post you'll be able to adjust some tones and have it be an overall softer image rather than having that complete contrast between the person being all the way exposed right and the sky blown out. Third tip that I'm going to give you for nailing your exposure every single time is to use light meters. Now I know there are going to be a lot of people who don't specifically know what a light meter is. I personally just got on light meters not too long ago which is crazy because I've been doing this for forever but a light meter can drastically help you expose your image and the process of using one is just so fast compared to you sitting there and eyeballing and doing all these different adjustments. Now if you don't know what a light meter is it's basically an object 
subject that points directly at a subject and it gives you an accurate readout of what to set your shutter speed, your aperture, and also your ISO to perfectly expose that image. Now the light meter that I've recently been using and fell in love with because of its size and portability is called the Luma Power by a company called Luma Labs. Now this very small convenient thing connects directly into your lightning port on your iPhone. You fire up the app, you point it at whatever you're trying to find the exposure for, and it gives you an accurate instant readout on what to exactly set your ISO aperture and shutter speed to perfectly expose the image. Now another really cool thing about this specific light meter is it gives you an instant accurate readout on Kelvin temperature if you're manually trying to expose your white balance as well. I love this little thing. It's very small. I'll leave a link down in the description if you all want to check it out. The light meters vary. They're really big ones. They're ones who run off batteries. This one right here, as I was talking about, runs off just the power on your iPhone, so it's very convenient. And these things are really cool. They're fast. They give you an instant readout, and they just make your life a whole lot easier if you're down to spend the cash to get one. So to give you all a real quick demonstration of what this particular light meter does and how it works with this particular app is... I have my YouTube light, the light that I'm using for my YouTube videos, and if I go into the application and I click on color temperature, and I hit this particular button right here, it's gonna give me a very instant and accurate readout of the temperature of the specific light. So if I wanted to go into camera and I wanted to set a custom Kelvin white balance, I would just have to go in and set that in the camera and it would be pretty accurate. Those are my three easy tips to help you know your exposure every single time. If you all found this video helpful, make sure to drop me a like, comment, also subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Peace out guys.